Good evening, everybody. Welcome to First Center for Spiritual Living. Um, welcome to everybody on the Zoom call. Uh, thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, Celia, for the wonderful opening. If this is your first time to the center, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, and if you're watching us later tonight or this week on uh, Facebook or Instagram or Zoom or wherever you may see us, uh, send us a message. We'd like to uh, get you involved in our gatherings. Uh, if you experience us through the Zoom call, it's really the best way to experience us because you can then have an opportunity to say hello and interact with one another. We've got a, a very exciting community that's been developing post-COVID. Uh, we're now what we'll call a virtual community with a uh, studio audience. And I was told three or four years ago that's the way of it for spiritual centers, that they will be virtual mostly and with uh, gatherings in person too. So we are open in New York City now, if you happen to be in New York on Thursdays and on Sunday mornings at 1045. Uh, let me do a little commercial before we start. Sunday morning, uh, if you happen to be able to uh, tune in at 1045 uh, is a meditation, then 11 o'clock the lesson. Uh, it's going to be Father's Day, and so we're going to have a talk uh, on uh, uh, th this holiday. So if you'd like to uh, immortalize whoever your father figure was, your dad, grandfather, uncle, whoever it is, uh, please send us uh, his name and uh, give us a little brief statement of a fond memory or how he inspired you. And uh, our, our message will be in the chat room, but it's uh, first, excuse me, FC, FCSLNYC at gmail.com. So you can email us at the center. Uh, the email address again is fcslnyc at gmail.com. Uh, so that's something nice to do. And, and uh, please send it to us before Sunday morning. You can send it Sunday morning, but it'll it'd be better for us if we get it earlier. Earlier responses will be appreciated. The other thing, you could also extend this offer to your friends and your neighbors or your family because everybody i would presume be, celebrates the memory of uh, their parents their father figures so we're going to go into today's lesson and um, most of the messages in this lesson are around the healing work of louise hay and ernest holmes um, so you can tune in each week for this right uh, every week there's another timely subject. I mean, people will tell me, oh, this is what I needed to hear. This is what came up for me. And uh, it's because these subjects are timeless. <laughs> uh, it usually resonates and helps people if you just tune in. Uh, and again, we have discussion after every lesson. One of Louise Hay's early lessons um, uh, is where I got the suggestion for tonight. Uh, and here's the question in that lesson. Are you someone who wants to take some greater control of your own circumstances? Are, are you somebody that wants to become more empowered? And most of you are, are going to say yes. So that's great. Louise Hay was a part of the center here in New York City. In her training, she learned that there's a power that she could use that was greater than herself and that it was available to her. And she was somewhat of an expert at teaching her students I mean, she's more so than anyone that's ever been before her. She was expert at teaching her students about their personal power and their ability to uh, prosper, to heal, and to create peace, uh, and to create your, what she called your best lives. Uh, so much so is her success eclipsed the entire movement with her Hay House Publishing Company that, I don't know, it was over, worth over $100 million in more importantly, she helped over 100 million people. Uh, there's a little well-being list that I found that she made up for one of her earliest classes. And I'm going to read it to you now, and you can see if any of it, uh, if you relate to it. So the question she asked, do you feel energized and enthusiastic today? You can answer that for yourself. Do you feel energized and enthusiastic about this week? Do you feel strong enough that you can face every day without fatigue? 
Next question she asks is, how is your appetite? That's usually a sign if, if you can eat well, right? Are you, do you have a good appetite? Are you eating healthy foods? Are, giving, are you giving yourself quality foods? Next, next question I think is even more important. Are you happy with yourself? If you look into the mirror, can you say, I love, accept, and approve of you exactly as you are? That's a big question. I've been teaching these classes for over 25 years, and that's a tough one when we start working with the mirror. Can you say to yourself, I love, accept, and approve of you exactly as you are, and mean it? So that question, are you happy with yourself? And only you know <laughs> what the answer is. And it's important though, because if you're not happy with yourself, you're definitely in the right place because this is what we do here. We, <laughs> we help you get there. Uh, what is your inner dialogue like? See, that's probably where I got that question all those years ago. It was in one of her first classes. If you're practicing the lessons and the teaching, now we're talking about the science of mind, we're learning to work with principle. If you're practicing the lessons and the teaching, your consciousness is starting to expand and your self-dialogue is increasing in, its, in, in positivity. Because so much of our stuff is unconscious, you know, from our family, we've grown up with it. So if you come into this class week by week by week, you're gonna to start to pay attention to that dialogue and you start to um, stop the negative and you begin to sh turn the dialogue around. It's just a little bit what we do in spiritual mind treatment, which uh, we teach you here. So as you're learning to be positive, the question she comes up next, are you learning to be a lifter? Are you here that, are you somebody that really, are you positive and you're really always trying to give someone an encouraging word? Because that's really what Louise Hay was to everybody. I mean, she, everybody liked listening to her and people still like listening to her. There's dozens of you who every night play her audio before you go to sleep. And my experience when I was teaching this material, in every type of venue, everybody was listening to her beautiful voice with these life-affirming messages. She ask, she will ask next in that very early class is, what is your stress level? Can you just think about it for a little bit? Do you find that you're worrying a lot about things that don't really matter that much? The things that we worry about are oftentimes far worse. <laughs> um, you know, from a recovery program years ago, FEAR, they would stay, it's spelled F-E-A-R, stands for false evidence appearing real. So people oftentimes have things that keep ruminating in their minds over and over and over again. You just, in a way, can't stop thinking about it. And you're worried about your boss. You're worried about what's going on. You're worried about this. You're worried about that. And, and all of that, of course, is just repeated thoughts and repeated thoughts that, you know, you know you're creative. We teach you here, all thought is creative. So if, if you have a lot of worrying going on, a lot of stress, um, you know, we want to help you stop that process or turn that process around. So just the question is, are you worrying a lot? Uh, Louise said worrying can be a very debilitating thing. And stress can bring forth all kinds of medical problems. So you want to ask yourself an answer, you know, how is your stress level? It's normal to have a little bit of it, right? Uh, but is it too much? So just make note. The question that follows <clears throat> is, are you trusting life? She used to say, are you trusting the process of life to be there for you? And only you will know the answer to that as well, because if you're constantly involved in fearful thought, and uh, <laughs> that shows that you, you really are not engaging your superpowers, and your powers, superpowers would be the realization, like Ernest Holmes would say, that you have power available for good, greater than you, and you can use it. Now, a lot of people just don't know that they have that ability inherent right inside of you. You have the ability to transform everything. So are you trusting life? <laughs> What is your level of faith right now in your own estimation? And it's gonna be different for everybody on this call. And if, if you're in a place where you're full of worry right now, you're in the right class because we're gonna keep gently suggesting ways for you to uh, 
stop that process and have a little bit more faith in. We'll give you lots of techniques so to help you move forward. Um, so this is maybe a time for you to call on what I call your higher powers. And I say that a little bit. Um, I'm not suggesting that you call on a supreme being. I'm saying maybe this is a time for you to call on your higher powers. You have a higher power. You have it within you. Today, with all the, you know, the um, superheroes out there, I'm going to say you have super abilities, though you may have forgotten or you may not know that you do. If you're new, you might not realize the power that you possess. Ernest Holmes said there's a bank account downtown. It's got your name on it, and it's got, I'll adjust it for today's dollars, millions and millions of dollars. It's right there for you. You have limitless everything available to you. But for you to realize that in your day-to-day -day living, there needs to be a shift in consciousness where you have an understanding that you are one with the one and that you can draw forth from that bank account um, joy and peace and prosperity and happiness, uh, abiding peace. You know, it's all available to you. So you come here to the class and we remind you of all of these things that are available and, and how, to, how to access them. So there's a power for, within you greater than you that <laughs> is a part of you, and it's endless and always responding to you. So let's remember that. Let's get in touch with that power. Intentionally, let's go there and recognize that there is this power. It's within me, and I can use it. So that's what I want to remind you of tonight. You have something in you. It's a presence that grows, and as Reverend Theo used to say, and it shows. You have a presence in you that grows, and it shows. It reveals itself to you and everyone, really, the more you understand and you rely on it. And as you unite, as you unite with it, you can heal your life. Everything will become much better if you start to engage these inner powers, these superpowers. That really, you were born with it. So... Next, Louise stated that doubt and worry are absolute killers. I thought, wow, that's a blunt statement. You know, if you have a lot of doubt and a lot of worry, she used the word killers. You know, so I guess, I mean, we all know we're smart, right? That if you're worrying a lot and you're full of doubts and fears, that that's going to rob you of your present. So you can't experience the God or the good or the source or the divine. You can't experience it if you're consumed with worry about the future or regret or resentments. If you're all caught up in gossip and you're all caught up in the problem, and then you're not in a place where you are carrying the truth forward in that moment. You are all caught up in something. So worry and doubt are killers. Let's talk about the importance of releasing them. Now, you can do it in a lot of ways. <laughs> you can make a process or a little game of it. Um, you can notice wherever you're worrying. I told you all the people I've known. There was a British lady, Joyce, who always said, go, next, next, next. Wherever she had a negative thought, she would have a process where she'd say next. I've had other classes where people would say, stop. Whenever they caught themselves in these fearful states, or they would say, fear. I'm in fear. That's f it's false. It's false evidence appearing real. I have the ability to turn all of that around. Doubt and persistent worry and all that kind of stress are very damaging patterns to operate in your body, and they can bring forth dis-ease, said Louise. And you can think about it. If you're in constrict constriction and you're all um, tightened and uh, you don't feel open and it's... Um, and you live in that kind of, you're working three jobs and you're, you're worried about your children and you're worried about this and your grandchildren, you're worried about so many things. You're worried about the economy lately, everybody seems to be. You're worried about inflation, you're worried about a lot of stuff. Well, you know, you don't want to stay in a state of worry. You want to find a way to get back to the idea that I am supplied and supported. And sometimes it's tough because you're right in the middle, you might be dealing with a health challenge. I know I've had a couple this past year and it's scary. Doctors tell you you have something that's potentially incurable. So you've got to deal with that. And you, you really can't, well, you can do whatever you want to do. But the thing is, if you want to have this process work with you, you want to come back to the realization that I am one with the one, and I have 
access to everything that's good and wonderful. And you begin to cancel out these patterns of doubt and fear. And in considering your, your health, Louise asked, how is your memory? And she commented, it will be sharper and better if you're learning to relax more, rest more, and de-stress yourself. Uh, you remember that phrase from, it was a Disney character, don't worry, be happy. I think it was Hakuna Matata or whatever it was. Being happy uh, is, ought to be a goal for all of us. The question she asked next, are you a happy person most of the time? And you know if you are, you're not. You know, are you there just seeing the humor in things and seeing the irony in situations? And are you there living with the understanding that even when things are really messy and seeming awful, that really uh, God is at hand. There's a, there's a creative process at work here and that's bringing, uh, that everybody is doing the best they can. Once you understand that everyone's doing the best that they can, you become more relaxed. You know, really you're not so much in the blame place because you realize they're doing the best they can and you have that kind of compassion where you can extend that with people. So happy people. Uh, Louise stated there's many good comedians that were never happy. They might have performed and made us laugh, but they weren't happy. You might be entertaining the world in your own life. When I was younger, I entertained everybody. You might be a bright spot for everybody. But the question always comes back to you. Are you happy with yourself? Are you loving yourself? Do you really, can you, can you relate to that affirmation that was so important? I love, accept, and approve of myself exactly as I am. Most people can't say that and really mean it. Because as soon as they say it, something comes up for them, right? Uh, well, that's what we do in the science of mind. Ernest Holmes made a lot of famous statements, but one of them is suffering. <laughs> So the idea of suffering is not of spirit, right? It's not God-ordained. So, and Emerson was talking about it in a different way. He said, the finite alone suffers. You know, we get suffer because we have all these attachments. And Emerson was saying, the infinite's always lying, laying back and smiling repose. So you can bring yourself to a place of happiness. You can bring yourself to a place of trusting the process of life. Uh, you'll do it better. <laughs> Once you understand that you have this, uh, you have this power within you, and you can rely on it for guidance. So, we learn from all these ideas here. We learn that we're all, we are okay. We're more than we we are more than okay. That we're supplied and supported in ways we don't even understand. So let's be resolved to learn and let go of all these states of consciousness: the fear and worry and doubt. As soon as you find yourself in them, you know, call me up. I'll talk to you. I'll give you some suggestions. Or just tune in here every week because we're reminding you of some very key things. You know, just release. I'll say, I release the need for this worry. I release this. I will not go towards resentment and anger toward anybody. I'll, I'll go to the idea that they're doing the best they can with what they know. Even when they're attacking you, they're doing the best they can with what they know. It's, you know, people are operating at their level of consciousness. Um, so in terms of your humor, are you fun to be around? Only you know if you are, right? Um, you know if you're an ogre or a beast, or you know if you're generally a happy person. Um, if you have things working out pretty well in your life, um, you will notice that you have a certain precision in your thinking, and you'll see that life is reflecting your consciousness, and it, it's doing so in somewhat of a synchronistic way. Uh, people who have been involved in our teaching for a long time, they kind of like have this positive expectancy thing that operates within them because they've been working on themselves for a long time. So if we have this working out, if you're really engaged in the teaching, we will be sensing and living from that place. You, you have a certain gratitude and humility just from having the awareness that you do. Again, this was one of Louise first classes and all these questions would be a help um, to the student, would help the student understand that their own mental patterns create their life experiences, both good and bad. Again, your mental pattern creates your life experience, good or bad. And we, we would begin to learn how the law works, and it's not about who's right and who's wrong, 
or who's good and who's bad. In this class, she instructed, she said the mental patterns create dis-ease in our body. So if you want your body to be brimming with health, <laughs> you want your mental, pa mental patterns to be on high. Each and every day, I'm getting better in every way. Every hand that touches me is a healing hand. Uh, I have no opponents. I, <laughs> I refuse to be offended. Um, I take nothing personally. See, when you start to have these operating uh, thoughts in your mind, then what other people are doing really is none of your business because you're focused on your own thoughts. Diseases, Louise thought, were something that could help us see that we're on the wrong track. Since she believed that we are living in a spiritual world and that we are caused our own life experiences. Um, now, I've had many students who want to fight me on this subject that we're caused our own experience, but that's not, God isn't out to get us or anything like that. It's just the way the law works. So, never did she suggest that any of us are to blame for anything. That's not what we do here. It's just if you have a persistent pattern of thought, it will play out in your life. And you have the power to change it always. So we don't have to be defensive, but we do need to acknowledge that, okay, I must be thinking something. I must be holding on to something. It's very easy to get stuck in the blame game. And I know I've done it in my life, and you probably have done it. We blame our, our bosses. We blame parents, sisters, brothers. Uh, the list is endless of the people. We could blame the economy, blame the current, whoever the president is or senators. It's just easy to blame. It's impossible to move forward when you're making your, old, your life and your circumstances about who has wronged you or you know, what the pastor has done, what the president has done, whatever. Well, if you're making your life about other people, it's really hard to move forward, Louise said. Um, or if in your life you're comparing yourself to somebody else and you think, oh my God, I got a bad hand, you know, this guy over here or whoever she is, they had all the breaks. That's not a healthy way to approach life. Um, each of us are in unique circumstances. And from the American Indians, we don't want to judge anybody because we don't really know what they're going through presently, what they've been through recently. We have no idea. So we don't want to judge. Uh, we understand as we come to this teaching more and more that everybody is in, is where they are by right of consciousness. And every single one of us is evolving. And we wanna have compassion for everybody. Even the people who are harming us, they wouldn't do it if they knew the whole story, you know? So it's just, it's a Christian principle of turning the other cheek. Um, much of what people suffer from is a result of false ideas that they're harboring in consciousness. They got it wrong half the time and they're acting on false ideas and false beliefs. We must get our faith way up <laughs> and get strong because, you know, as you get stronger, there's gonna be people out there that'll be nipping at your heels sometimes. So we must get that faith up, faith up in the power of our word and be dedicated to the work that we have of changing our own thinking. Because as we change our thinking, as we get more whole, we'll be able to help people better. Of course, as a minister, I can give you loads and loads of ways for doing this, but staying plugged in with us every week, as often as you can, will help you tremendously. It's like an insurance policy. You're making small installments, but it will pay very big dividends because you just keep being reminded of the truth of who you are and being reminded that it is your thought and your cumulative thoughts that are going on within you that are creating your days, your hours, your, your week. Um, Suggestion here for us to increase our faith is start doing some short, powerful affirmations. Uh, and we will lead you toward the process of affirmative prayer where you can, uh, it's a deeper process. But what you want to do to start with is just stop the process of the negative thinking when you find yourself in going in that direction where you're fearful and you're off track. Whenever you forget that you are one with source or one with life, um, Complaining won't help you, okay? That's the time to stop whatever that dialogue is and turn it around. Uh, and we wanna hear in this class, start to figure out what needs to be released. Every single day and every week, we mindfully notice what comes up for us. 
And we try not to make it about the other person, okay? Uh, and then we cancel it, we delete it, we replace whatever that negative notion is with a better and bigger idea, one that is true. And as we do this, it signals that uh, it's time for healing. It's time to make ourselves whole. We have a center of wisdom within us. We access it to heal our lives. Once we understand the process, we are able to take conscious control of what we wish to change in our lives. Then you can say to yourself, I have already begun the healing process. That was Louise's exact quote. I have already begun the healing process. And you can start to take control of your life. Uh, once we do this, thing, something shifts within you and the healing process begins. Your body is a mirror of all your thoughts and beliefs. The body is always in communication with you if you will listen. Every cell responds to every thought you think and every word you speak. Your face reflects back your thoughts. A scalded up face, twisted up face reflects the thoughts you're thinking. Uh, and then she asked, how do you want to look as you get older, as you age? And she said, it's our birthright to be totally happy and totally fulfilled in your life. Well, if you can bring yourself to uh, being more happy, you're going to, I, I guess we could conclude that our looks and our appearance is going to uh, uh, change as well. Uh, and she went into the next part of the lessons, working with your doctor and working on your thought patterns will accelerate the healing process. Well, nobody could argue with that. Um, we're believers in following, uh, you know, earlier versions of New Thought would not advocate going to doctors and things like that. But, you know, as you come into our teaching, we work with our doctors, we work with healthcare practitioners, um, and all of that. Um, and we work with our thought patterns. And as we do that, our healing will accelerate and become complete. Uh, then she had a little re relaxation piece where she said, relax and take a deep breath. Let these thoughts wa wash over you. It doesn't matter if you understand these ideas or not. Only the ideas that are right for you will be accepted. Your subconscious mind will hear and record what you need to hear. Um, so I'm going to fast forward through some of this because this is actually one of her seminars. She went on to say, as children, we learn how to feel about ourselves by the reactions of adults around us. We may, we may still have these patterns going on, uh, and this isn't to blame our parents. They did what they felt was right with the beliefs and the understanding they had. Uh, and she said, we're, in some ways we're victims of victims because your parents did the best that they could at the time. Um, for example, if your mother did not know how to love herself or your father did not know how to be gentle and kind, uh, it would be impossible for them to convey these values to you. So we're remembering our fathers this Sunday. And uh, so again, I already asked you to send us an email if you want, and give us some comments about your dad, <coughs> um, and invite your friends to do the same. And uh, we're going to, as uh, what's our phrase, we're going to immortalize your dad's, or your, whoever the father figure by having them included in our presentation on Sunday morning. Uh, in this class, we learn how to parent ourselves, though, so you all know that. So we're responsible to start thinking more expansive thoughts and release the ideas of blame and uh, release shame and release guilt and release resentments. Um, for we know uh, the point of power is always in this moment. So it doesn't matter if you've been carrying a lot of stuff for a lot of years, you can change as of when. Now, obviously. Um, the checklist continuing on a little bit further. She said, I want you to notice what you've been thinking. Okay, and pay attention to your thoughts. Create a journal if you need to. Um, have a prayer partner. <laughs> uh, talk about it in our classes on Thursday night, you know, and notice how your thinking is uh, playing out in your life. And when you're noticing your thinking, you might ask yourself, is this, is this the type of thinking you want to have to be creating your future? Uh, and notice whether your thoughts are positive or negative. Uh, and start to become aware of what's going on within you. I mean, again, I know when I'm having a bad day, and I'm sure you, <laughs> you do too. So it's my responsibility always to 
interrupt that negative process and look for the pony in it. You know what I'm, by the pony I mean, look for the good that's happening in this given day. And, um, you know, you, you'll get to the point where you're gonna release the need to be bothered by what people, places, and things are saying, what's, or what's happening. Because you understand that you were caused your own experience. Um, we choose our thoughts and we can refuse to think the negative ones. Louise noticed that just about everyone is suffering from self-hatred or guilt in some degree. Now, I know some of you are old-timers and you don't do a lot of that, but it's in all of us still. <laughs> um, so let's, let's develop the faith um, to let that go wherever we spot it. The more guilt we have and the more self-hate we have, the, le the less our life will work well. And we might also be angry. And you might be a person who's you know, angry, you're trying to help everybody, and inwardly you're not happy. So you've got to, the suggestion would be do something with that. I'm not going to tell anybody what they have to do. Uh, Louise Hay noticed a bottom line for those people that she worked with. And she said, the bottom line for everybody, and I've worked with thousands, is I don't deserve this, or I'm not good enough, I don't do enough. And they're very, very critical. So if you're finding yourself being critical about anything t too much, um, that's a place to start doing your work. Um, and you ask yourself, she said, um, if you're saying I don't deserve this, and I, you know, and I, if you're being very critical, she'll say, who are you trying to please? What standards? Where did that come from? Um, for all these thoughts are acting within us and on us. If your beliefs contradict your thoughts, the subconscious mind won't allow you to obtain your goals. So what she's saying here is if you're, you're speaking affirmations are really positive, like I'm whole and complete, I'm healthy, I'm prosperous, and, and those are great affirmations, but if inside of you, you don't feel like you're worthy of good things to happen and you have an inner uh, sense that um, uh, you're not good enough, then uh, you're not gonna have the demonstration that you wanna have. So, in the treatment process, which we teach you, Ernest Holmes will say it's the time, it's the art, the method of ridding that negation, that negativity from within you. So affirmations are very powerful, but you need to work with them and to, to a place where you actually believe what you're saying. Resentment, fear, and criticism, all of this cause problems in the body. Uh, blaming people is always a mistake. <laughs> Um, because we're always responsible for our own lives, so please don't make your life about anyone else. Uh, whatever you're seeing out there as the problem is a mirror of your inner thinking. We are metaphysicians here first and foremost. We are New Thought students. We're here to see the good. That's what we're here to do, and we're here to heal our lives. Um, we're here to change our thinking. <laughs> we're not here to change anybody else. We're here to see the good, the God, in every encounter. Um, we want to learn to release the mental patterns that have uh, created these experiences in our life. I pull out a, a, I have all kinds of good treatments, you would imagine, in this place. So when things are, you know, I'm experiencing a disconnect, I pull out these um, uh, treatments, these affirmations, and I will read them until I believe them. <laughs> and I suggest, you know, whatever you do to bring yourself to that place, you want to do that. Um, you want to take back your power. You are not a victim of this world. So you wanna take back your power and release this negativity, this worry or whatever it is, and know that you have power and you, and you can use it. Um, fear, last thing I'm gonna say about that subject. Fear comes from not trusting the process of life. So we wanna trust the process of life more. Uh, and that was one of her affirmations I used to love the most. I trust the process of life is taking care of me. 